Oh, here it is. Okay. Oh, well, yep, that's what the title is. Okay. Well, Barton was a school that was established in 1915. And this picture right here is actually from 2005. And before exploring Barton's specific history through primary sources and our visit to Barton, I want to explore what was happening at the time of its inception. From 1894 to 1915, when Barton was made, the goals of progressive reformers influenced education in the United States, since education was seen as a way to teach children the proper values needed to be a productive American citizen. It was thought that society's ills could be part evaluated by education for all classes that would fit children for their proper role in society. Public education, which Barton was, even from its establishment, was also seen as a way to Americanize the vast number of immigrant children flooding into cities. And Barton has historically, and in present day, been just that, a magnet for immigrants. Immigrants to America at the time of the school's inception were mostly from Western and Southern Europe, such as Italy. But in present day, the immigrant population at Barton is actually mostly Somali, which is due to its collapse of its central government in 1991. In the past 10 years, Barton has accepted quite a lot of Somali immigrants, even though they do not live usually in proximity of the school. Even given this proximity issue, Somali students still make up a considerable part of the school. 45% of the school's kindergarten class is African American, and that 45% is vastly made up of Somali immigrants. But enough foreplay. Let's actually go to the school many of us working on this project have actually gone to. When we actually got inside the school, it turned out that there was a very good dance recital going on that we sat in on and got to record. <laughs> of that production of Blake Masterfee, I want to show you the picture of Clara Barton that proudly parades in front of the school. And, if I may, I want to provide some contextualization for who Clarissa Harlow Barton really was. She was, and is, one of the most honored women in American history. She went out on the battlefield and brought supplies and support to soldiers during the Civil War. She founded the American Red Cross in 1881 at age 60 and was its leader for 23 years. She then died in 1913, two years before Barton's establishment as a school. When the Harrison Open School needed a name change. They chose Clara Barton to be their namesake because of her work in the medical field.
Back to inside the school, it took our incredibly productive team a while to actually land an interview with one of the experienced teachers at the school. But Allison, a teacher who has taught here for more than 20 years, gave us some insight. Barton is an open school, um, yes. which means it's a progressive K through eight school. Um, which means that it focuses on slightly different values than a traditional program. It focuses on student um, choice and learning and students and parents and teachers sort of as being partners in everybody's learning. Yeah. So it's not about teachers sort of like, you know, pouring knowledge into a student's brain. It's about the students and the teachers and the parents working together to help students learn in the best possible way for them. As Allison talked of progressive education, I couldn't help but think of that correlation between when Barton was made under a different name but during the twilight of the progressive era and the adoption of the philosophy of progressive and open education in today's Barton. Talk about what is it that students want to learn, are excited to learn, um, what is it they're excited to be in school for. And we use that to sort of make both protocols for classes as well as goals and hopes and dreams for every child in terms of what they want to accomplish that year. And then we kind of keep going back to that to see if they've accomplished that. Barton's philosophy of three-dimensional cooperative education between teachers, students, and staff, and parents goes deeper than just this. This progression is even more expanded when I learned by research that Flory Somers, one of the teachers at Barton, coaches a Somali debate team that, yes, placed first place in the Somali Debate League. Anyway, back to my interview with Allison, I also got some insider information that the internet was not able to give me about Barton Open School's history. It's more than a century old. <laughs> Um, and there's been, there have been students and children in this building continuously. It used to be called the Harrison Open School. So it was a different, it had a different name at first. Huh. And uh, I don't know exactly how long it's been parted for. There's some great pictures on the wall though, where I've seen, got photos of 45 younger children sitting, two people per desk, knitting for the World War I war efforts. So the school has kind of been in continuous operation for that long. Wow. Um, which is a kind of a little known fact, maybe. Yeah. Um, I also know there was, a, there was a large construction project. This is what's called the old part of the building. Yeah. The south wing and the north wing, like where Amber and Sarah's and Flora's classes are, hmm. is the new part of the building. It didn't used to exist. The commons used to be the parking lot. Yeah. And the gym was in the parking lot. And um, so all of that was added about 12 years ago. 12 years ago. Yeah. 14 years ago. The names that Allison mentioned were 7th and 8th grade teachers on the bottom floor of the school. The entire parking lot was actually repurposed and built over into a commons area where the school convenes for morning meetings and other affairs. This area, only a couple decades ago, was built and during my fifth grade year in 2012 Steve DeLapp the most iconic and longest serving principal of Barton resigned and this commons area was later named after him called the Steve DeLapp Commons and don't worry Mr. Denisenko Allison showed me a historical picture of Barton in the 1910s. So, is that the um? If you looked up the picture in front of it, you can really see the. There's like the clock even over the closet. That's this room. That's this room. Yep, it's this room. Look at see the little circle over the closet back there where the clock was. Oh wow, yeah. So that's where the clock was. There's the closet. You can see these are the old blackboards. I mean, look at these walls. This is the old blackboard. That's the slate backboard. Isn't that wow. funny? I mean, it they're says, not. You can't write out now that they're too old. Yeah. They don't work. It but says that's... knitting in class. <laughs> Students at Clara Barton School in Minneapolis knit for the rest then, during uh, First World War. Forty-five kids sitting in that classroom. Wow. Yeah. So. 
This picture, taken in 1954, is of the Harrison Open School before it changed its name and got a new entire front section and back section later in its history. Given its changes, it still in present day champions the American flag outside its doors to honor a nation of immigrants and one that will keep being improved by immigrants to this day and beyond. This picture was taken my 8th grade year and commemorates the 100th anniversary of Barton Open School. No school is perfect, and Barton is no exception, sharing a lot of race relation issues that the country faces, especially against its Somali immigrants. Even though this is a truth, Barton keeps striding to make a difference in this world. That concludes this mini-documentary. Thank you all for watching and enjoy the math hall of shame 2020 2020 vision uh, looking at precision i do one if you look both ways when you cross my mind 2020 2020 vision i wonder if you look both ways when you